Yeah, the, the, the use of vitamin C in cancer and other diseases has been popularized by a well-known doctor, PhD, and Nobel Prize winner. His name is Dr. Linus Pauling, who, who felt that using high doses of vitamin C in particular has an ability to you know, fight all kinds of conditions and diseases, including helping patient, patients with cancer. And what, that, what was that, that was sparked from was from some original research that was done in Scotland in the 1970s. It's called the uh, Vale of Leaven studies in a hospital there, where they were using high doses of vitamin C in groups of cancer patients where the options weren't too good. And so they decided to use high doses and see what happens. And what they found, though, was actually quite surprising, was that they noticed in groups of patients that the tumors that were growing stopped growing, others it slowed it down, and others it actually shrank them. And in others, it actually it, it shrank them so strong and so hard that um, the, the tumors actually disappeared, but the patients went into shock and died. And that, that actually was confirmed at autopsy. So that's how powerful vitamin so C... So the patients died because of the massive tumor... Kill. ...apoptosis that was yeah, happening yeah. in their body. Yeah, the massive kill, yeah. Tumor lysis syndrome, you know, it's, that's a, probably a technical term for it, yeah. But then we hear about this very famous Mayo Clinic study that seems to disprove these earlier findings on the efficacy of vitamin C in treating cancer. Yeah, that, that's another good question, and, and it's and it's one that you know a lot of the scientific community they that they always recite that there's no benefit to vitamin C. But when you really look at how the study was conducted, there's probably two major flaws that comes to mind. The first one was just say looking at. Um, the placebo group, the group that's not supposed to be getting a type of vitamin C, the control. When you looked at, say, the urine of that group, they actually had high levels of vitamin C in there, and it makes sense. You're a patient with cancer, you hear about something that could help you fight your cancer, are you going to take it or not? You know. So then when you're looking at comparison, uh, the, the group that's not supposed to be taking is taking vitamin C, the group that is, and when you look at the comparison, even though they're both getting better, it looks like there's no difference. You know. So that's one, but I think this, uh, the, the second the most important variable that everybody missed was how it was given. The original research done in hospital in Scotland, they used intravenous vitamin C, um, say 10 grams IV over 24 hours, 10 days, followed by oral maintenance, 10 grams, and then if there were signs of infection or tumor growth, they would give IV by injection. And none of the research used IV vitamin C. So the way vitamin C was administered may made a big difference. And why is that? Isn't, you know, what kind of difference are we looking at? Isn't vitamin C, vitamin C, why does it matter so much how it was administered? Well, there's, there's some really new, interesting new research that was done a few years ago in the United States where they looked at this issue, oral versus IV. If you were, say, were taking between 2,000 milligrams or 2 grams of oral vitamin C by pills up to 18,000 milligrams or 18 grams, the blood doesn't go any higher, it stays the same. Now if you simply injected 2,000 milligrams or 2 grams by IV, the blood spikes 70 times higher in the blood. And so, and when you're looking at the research done with vitamin C to kill cancer cells or have an effect on them, you need a strong concentration. And the only way to do that is by intravenous injection. It's the only way that we know of at this time. Um. Now, for someone who is currently receiving treatment for cancer, say chemotherapy, isn't it dangerous for them to take um, vitamin C because apparently vitamin C has some sort of antioxidant effect mm -hmm. on the chemo that's not good for mm -hmm. the chemotherapy? That, that's, that's another good question. And, um, and it's something that is, uh, is talked about in a lot in, in cancer, cancer circles. And there's some people sitting on the fence with this. Some cancer oncologists are like, well, you know, I think it's okay. And others are, oh, maybe stay away. And the reality is, is that when you look at the IV use of vitamin C in high doses, you know how it kills cancer cells? Via an oxidative mechanism. It actually works similar to like chemotherapy, certain chemos. It actually kills cancer cells by increasing hydrogen peroxide in the cells. Cancer cells cannot handle it, so they die by an oxidative mechanism. Normal cells have the machinery to break that down and get rid of it. So when you're using intravenous vitamin C and in higher doses, it's, it's not an anti... But if you use lower dose vitamin C, it could have some antioxidant properties. Um, so is it safe? 
Yeah, you know, in general, the use of vitamin C is quite safe. There are there are there have been a few case reports where if people have had, say, a certain type of kidney, stone-forming type of uh, predisposition, there might be a concern. There's a rare type of um, uh, uh, ge genetic type of person where they, they have a ability, when they do too much vitamin C, it might hurt the, their blood cells. And these are things that we screen for in every type of case. These are really rare anomalies. I give vitamin C to all kinds of really fragile, sick cancer patients and other types. To this day, I've, I've not seen any type of complication with them. And um, so it's quite a safe treatment for, for a lot of uh, patients in general.